As a disclaimer, this video contains changes to Italy that we know of, as of when I'm writing this script. If anything pops up during editing, I'll try my best to fit it in. Also, this video was voted on by the Discord server, so be sure to join the server to vote on the next one. Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett, and I'll be your host today for another update video on the EU4 1.30 update and accompanying Emperor expansion. If you're interested in the changes coming to Italy, missed a few dev diaries, or prefer to learn with a video format, you've come to the right place. However, dealing with the heartland of Catholicism, changes to religions in 1.30 will be included in a separate video. Similarly, I made a video covering the changes to Germany, so be sure to check that out if you're curious. Without further ado, let's begin with the changes to southern Italy as we make our way north. Be warned, as I don't know how to pronounce Italian names, but as we can see in Sicily, Agrigento and Trapani have been added to split the dev of the island. Along with these map changes, the releasable tag of Sicily has been added as well as the formable nation of two Sicilies. North of Sicily, we have changes to Naples, as the provinces have been shuffled around slightly to add a ninth province, Avellino, and a tenth province, Molise. You'll also notice the names have been changed on a couple of the provinces as well. To the west, the island of Sardinia has had the province of Arborea added in. With the map changes covered, we can move on to the big changes coming to Naples. Upon the death of Aragon's King Alfonso V, Aragon will have to decide whether to keep Naples or to grant them independence. If Aragon is an AI, they are, quote, overwhelmingly likely to respect the wishes of its beloved king, and will set Naples free. A newly independent Naples will apparently struggle to survive, as both France and Spain slash Aragon will receive lengthy Restore Union CBs on Naples later on, while Naples will also have to pay gold and legitimacy to the Vatican. As for other highly impactful events for Naples, we have the possibility of the Neapolitan Republic forming. From the beginning of the Age of Absolutism, there was a chance for an event to fire starting the Peasant Revolts. The rebels will spawn in two waves, and if they successfully break the country and form a republic, the surrounding nations will gain a changed government CV against Naples, similar to how the Ambrosian Republic works. If Naples is under a PU during this event, the option to avoid the revolts and immediately become a republic is removed, but rebels can still force it. Lastly for southern Italy, we have the mission tree shared by Naples and the new formable nation of two Sicilies. This mission tree will be exclusive to the Emperor expansion, and starts off by granting Naples legitimacy to its bastard king Ferdinand. Being on good terms with the Papal States and becoming the defender of the faith will respectively grant you papal influence and permanent tolerance of the true faith. These two paths here encourage conquests in Italy, the Balkans, the Mediterranean, and Jerusalem, and then finally turning the tables on Aragon to secure a personal union over them. This final path here deals with development and the Republican struggle within Naples. Now we can move up to central and northern Italy, starting with the changes in central Italy. Umbria and Roma have been split to add Terracina and Spoleto. Romagna has been split and put under the control of Venice, while the other half has been made into its own OPM of Bologna. The states in central Italy have also received their own mission trees. Starting with the Papal States, we see a large tree focused on spreading Catholicism, available to the Emperor expansion owners. This first branch has the Papal State go through the requirements to form the Kingdom of God, a new government reform available to the Papal State. Going down these two branches of the tree will have the Papal States reach out to other Catholic nations, and potentially Ethiopia surprisingly enough. We don't have many of the details for the requirements to fulfill these missions, but we know for certain that they end in a very powerful event. If the owners of Moscow and Constantinople are Catholic, the Pope can end the schism, giving all Orthodox nations the option to swap to Catholic. The Pope must also use whatever means he deems necessary to bring the light of Catholicism to Japan and China. After doing so, it will be much easier for any Catholic nation to convert provinces under their control in those regions. Many of the missions in the tree will also give bonuses to the Papal State's allies. For instance, mercenary discipline will be provided upon completing the Holy League mission, 
and missionary bonuses will come to Lithuania for completing Eastern Catholicization. Many of the other missions are relatively self-explanatory, having you attempt to counter the Reformation, develop your country, and advance institutions of learning. The next tree to look at is Florence's, also an Emperor-exclusive tree. Florence's missions focus on building up the country rather than much expansion. It's not very apparent what each of these missions do, as we only have a brief overview of what Florence should focus on. After slowly going from a republic to hereditary rule, apparently an Italy formed from Florentian roots should be, quote, obscenely wealthy. Florence will also get its own unique form of republic, called the Italian Signoria, granting the ability to form royal marriages and the re-election of ruling families. Of course, the notion that this is practically a monarchy is ridiculous, and the events of Savonarola's rule should prove this, of course. Various events will change Savonarola's popularity during the course of this disaster, and if Savonarola's rule is found popular, Florence goes down the path of becoming a theocracy. If not, Florence can reinstate the Medici family, as if the whole thing never happened. Moving on to the changes to Northern Italy, we have a few new provinces added for Venice and Milan, with name changes added here and there for other provinces. The OPM of Saluzzo has been comfortably squished between France and Savoy, and will surely survive more than just five years. Similarly, like with Central Italy, we see some more mission trees added here and there. Let's start from left to right, with Savoy's very detailed tree. Savoy's first path includes parts of its real-life history, and encourages firstly forming the Kingdom of Sardinia Piedmont, and reigning in the north, after which they'll go south and take Sicily, and then form a PU over Naples. After consolidating that power, Savoy should push to become the King of France, after taking Switzerland and Burgundy with a force union CB. The far right branch has a rather unique path of development. After adding 3 development to the province of Turin, achieving 120 total development, and embracing the Renaissance, the Prosper in Piedmont mission is achieved, and Savoy gets to pick which culture it will call its own, either French Occitanian, or to keep the current path and add even further development to Torino. From there, Savoy will have to develop its mountainous capital to a staggering 30 dev and have 6 buildings in it. Although a daunting task, your capital will become a center of trade, and the path to more powerful missions will open. Having 100 total dev in the capital area will provide a staggering 5% admin efficiency and 5% goods produced for the rest of the game. From the same branch, Savoy can form the Order of Saints Morris and Lazarus, granting plus 2% missionary strength and plus 0.5 yearly papal influence. And finally, Savoy can get claims on Cyprus, not only from a mission but also from an event, which I'll talk about later. Savoy's defense tree has you make strong allies, some of which should be rivals of each other to make sure you're on the winning side, of course. This branch ends with the building of four forts, which will be given a hefty boost by being upgraded to the next level each. The previously mentioned Cyprus event can appear if the Duchess is alive while Cyprus is conquered by a non-Christian nation, and it is accompanied by another event about the anti-pope Felix. I should mention that Sardinia Piedmont will also receive its own new national ideas. Moving west, we have confirmation of Genoa's mission tree, available also as an emperor exclusive, but we don't have the details about that quite yet. We do, however, have a tree available to emperor owners for Milan. Milan's tree is all about Italy. The missions are, thankfully, rather self-explanatory, as we don't have much of an explanation other than what we see. The paths of conquest have you push far down south into Italy, form a PU over Naples, and eventually have you take on the Habsburgs in the northeast. The diplomatic path has you secure powerful allies to defend you during your change to the Ambrosian Republic, as events will cause unrest and multiple government changes along the way. Finally, the development path has you focus on developing the capital and surrounding state. An Italy formed under Milan will likely have a strong military and a rather developed Lombardy area. The second last mission tree we have to look at today is Venice's. Venice doesn't deal much with Italy itself, but is keen on dominating the Eastern Mediterranean with trade and becoming a powerful economic player. The missions are hard to guess for, but we have a brief description of the Plague Doctor training mission, 
which uniquely removes the chance for some plague events to happen and decreases the firing chance for some others. So that's all we have for a non-unified Italy, but we do have a complete unified Italy mission tree available once any nation has formed Italy. If you were thinking that the earlier trees looked a little bit small, then don't worry, as the Italy tree available to the Emperor DLC adds to this number of available missions to match roughly with those of Spain or Austria. The first branch deals with Italy itself and bringing the South's development up to par with the North. The second branch, the one of Conquest, deals with expansion in a very similar manner to how Rome did its conquests in real life. If you couldn't tell so far, this tree encourages the player down the path of restoring the Roman Empire. You'll have to enter France, invade Iberia, and wrestle control of Greece from the Ottomans' hands, eventually ending in Anatolia and Iberia being completely conquered. Although I personally think there are a few more missions that could be added pertaining to this ordeal, especially maybe something dealing with North Africa, you'll at least be well on your way to completing that eventual goal. As for the last branch on this tree, it's similar to the second one, but focuses on building a large Mediterranean fleet capable of fighting off the Ottomans and landing in the Delta to take Egypt yourself. And with that, I think I've covered everything we currently know about Italy in the 1.30 update and Emperor expansion. As you may or may not know, my goal is to cover everything in the upcoming expansion as much as I can before it releases. Today I'm proud we can say we can highlight Italy on the map. To help me on this journey, dropping a like would go a long way. And to make sure you don't miss the next one, subscribing and turning on notifications is always your best bet. For now, this is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. I'd like to give a special thank you to the following patrons. In the $1 tier we have Quiet Guy, Quigersol, Rising Runner, DLNM, and Francesco. In the $3 tier, we have Ben Greenhagen. In the $10 tier, we have Natsuki. And in the $20 tier, we have Chewy Shoot. Thank you guys so much for helping to move this channel forward. You guys mean a lot to me, and I couldn't possibly thank you enough.